This is Jordan Tower with JT News. Make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. Well, my boy M. Rex been busy, okay? So me and him talked, and I was going to do a little thing on just the things he's been up to. Uh, one thing he did, he got that uh, interview with uh, Rich Porter's ex-worker talking about Alpo. Now, the guys get a tattoo, and he kind of goes back on everything that... You know, he goes over everything, saying that, you know, this was unnecessary. There was no reason for Alpo to put this out and open all these fresh wounds. Um, also, uh, you know, why wait a year to put it out? And also, I didn't know this. I didn't know that nobody know, knew Alpo actually did what he did to Rich Porter until like five years later. I didn't know that people like, you know, in the movie and everything, they make it seem like everybody knew right away. Uh, as we know, Rich Porter's brother was kidnapped and he was trying to raise the money. A lot of money was tied up in condos and cars, as this guy puts it, and he had to raise the money. So he had to do what he had to do to get the money to get his brother home safe. And, uh, you know, at that time, AZ had kind of cut the supply off for a while because he had just been shot. And if I'm doing everything correctly. And then also, so Rich Porter got some work from AZ to get his brother back. And uh, Alpo felt disrespected by that and took it out on Rich Porter. So, I don't know. I find it kind of crazy, spooky. Alpo's a spooky dude, though. You know, he took out one of his best friends instead of having a conversation with him. That's, that's why I would never cross Alpo. I would never... You know how certain people on YouTube go after Alpo and everything? <laughs> Dealing with a different kind of person there, man. This guy's about that life, okay? For real, for real. He's about that murder gang, okay? I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. Uh, I think it was unnecessary what he did. But you could tell he had no... It didn't seem like he had any remorse. I might be wrong. It didn't seem like it. I don't know. It's spooky. Then we got uh, Twiz. He was a member of... Uh, Raekwon's team under, you know, Wu-Tang. And uh, he's a talented rapper. Uh, he was down with Raekwon for many years. I think, I don't know the complete story of everything that happened, but you know he's down with Raekwon. Well, he said Raekwon can actually fight and Raekwon got a heart because he Raekwon owed him money at one point and he was going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Raekwon and him and Raekwon and Power were down to draw them weapons and emasculate Twiz. <laughs> so, uh, Twiz seems like a good guy. Plus, rap was a lot different back then. Like, if you felt disrespected, you went right to the weapons right away, okay? I'm not saying that doesn't happen now, but it was just, it was a different vibe back then. I was, uh, he said, he was talking like 2000, 2001. I wasn't even in the game at that point, you know? Not till like 2003, I would say, two or three. I started to dibble and dabble while I got it to, you know, I my first year of college, I started dibble and dabbling with stuff, you know, doing music videos in around 02. So, I don't know. Different vibes back then. And then lastly, Wreck interviews a guy named Hardy, Hattie, Hattie Rax. This guy can rap. I checked him out, okay? I never heard of him really before. But, uh... He brought DMX to relapse and start crying when he uh, heard his slip and remix. Now, DMX is one of my favorite rappers, uh, just for the emotional part. DMX is very emotional. You can feel his emotion in the music. And for him to connect with Hattie Rax is probably special. Uh, you know, Rex doing some good interviews, so I felt I would cover them. Me and him talked about it. And I felt I would cover them. I'll link them below. Uh, he's been putting that work in. So anyways, guys, this is George Taylor with JT News. I will check you guys in the next one. Peace.